I want to show you how to take two concepts and really use them to understand a little bit more about the internals of SSIS. And I think that if you can combine these two techniques and help yourself understand a little bit more about data types inside of SSIS, you're going to you're just going to save so much development time. It's going to make your experience inside of SSIS so much better. Now, the two concepts that you have to know, the two techniques, are how to create a fake destination and how to use the data viewer. If you have not watched the two prior videos in this chapter, in Chapter 4 of Course 158, now's the time to stop this video, go back and watch those. I'm going to blaze through how to create a fake destination and how to use a data viewer. That's considered prerequisite knowledge at this point. If you, so if you hadn't watched them, maybe you'll get a little bit out of this video. You could just watch it and then go back and look at those. But to get the most out of this video, you really need to have an idea of when and why we would use a trash destination, uh, when and why we would use a data viewer, which is what the two prior videos in this section were about. Okay, so here's what we have. We've got a text file. And it's got three columns. Uh, one is a, you can see here, if we were mapping this to a SQL Server data type, this would be a date time data type. This would not be a small date time. This would not be a date time two. This would be just a plain old, and I mean old school, date time data type. Um, and this, we don't really have a mapping directly. We're going to have to do some type of a conversion uh, for SQL Server to be able to treat this as a bit data type. You can see it is a Boolean data type. It's true-false, but we don't have true-false in SQL Server, which is ultimately maybe what we would have as a destination, so we'd have to do some type of a conversion. All right, well, don't focus so much on that part. I don't know why I did. Um, coming back over here, let me go to the Visual Studio and create just an empty project and I'm recreating what I've done in the past two videos I'm going to create a data flow task and I'm going to make my source my flat file source be that text file that we took a look at I'll call it source vendors column names in the first row uh, you could see the data and I'm going to create my trash destination using a row count. And so I'll just call this fake destination. And to use the fake destination, to use the row count, we have to have a user variable. Call it counter. Make sure it's an int32. Again, if I'm going fast, right, it's because we've done this now uh, over the past couple of videos. Just go watch those. Uh, run it, make sure we get green, add, come back in. I should have added my data viewer already. Sorry, right click. I mean, really, next, 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 finish. No thought process at all. Uh, it's just automatic. Okay, You'll get to that point. Um, so we are at a good point here to show this. Now, at the end of the last video, I was showing how you could use the data viewer to visualize how SSIS treated your data. So we are somewhat fortunate here in that when we run this and we look at the data, it directly matches to what's in the input file. But that won't always be the case. You will have situations where SSIS will mangle the data, where you may have multiple uh, delimiters in a text file that breaks something, uh, you could have many times where it just doesn't work out. You think it works out, but it doesn't. Um, so here's what I'm going to show you how to do. I showed you the data viewers. Here's what I want to show you. What we're going to do is we're going to go to the source connection. And I'm going to edit it. I could double click it, do the same thing. And under advanced for the columns, you have this suggest types button here. Now, the default is when it loads up data in a text file that it's going to use non-unicode string and 50 as the width. And that may not actually map up right. So if we choose the suggest types, now it will sample this number of rows 
and it will say I will choose the smallest integer type you, this is an option um, it will suggest the smallest real uh, which is uh, gonna have a lot of decimal places um, and here's what I use to identify boolean values okay. well this is case sensitive here so true false with a capital TF is not going to match our true false with the lowercase so I need to actually make it true false if I want it to identify that particular column as being a boolean I say okay and you can now let's just widen this a little bit you can see that because we told it to suggest the smallest integer data type when we were right here this little section right there because we told it that it chose a one byte integer for this well that's not what we want if we're mapping this to a SQL Server data type it's probably going to be a four byte signed integer or the DTI4 if you are un unsure about these data types uh, a little bit earlier in the chapter we had a whole section on working with data types where we broke down the differences between them might be helpful to go back to that so I did need to change a little bit here under the add date it has picked up a DT date interesting I'm gonna leave that for the time being and under is enabled it picked up the boolean value and it says that after the is enabled that's when the control line feed or that's when the new row symbol uh, is going to be found so I say okay now and instantly we get this little warning that says hey well I expect it to pop up it says hey you are not in sync okay now you need to understand something in the last video I kinda blazed through this and I double clicked and I said yes and said okay and went through it but here's what is happening and now you need to understand what this actually meant so what it's telling us is that inside my source the column coming in has changed its data type but the column going out has not and so they're out of sync now let me show you what I mean I'm going to say no so that you can understand what I mean when I say column going in and column going out so when I say that I'm gonna say cancel because I really don't want to go here I want to use the advanced editor so I go to show advanced editor and I get the same pop-up well I've already said no so it didn't do it sorry so what you have to understand is under this input and output properties under the flat file source output there are two sections external columns and output columns and I know we've talked about this a couple of times already in the course but it's probably worth revisiting here so the external columns are the columns in the actual source connection so these are the columns from the actual uh, let me see if I can get this to show up here these columns come from the source they are external to this particular source okay, I drug a flat file source onto here but these external columns are from the connection manager that just coincidentally is called source the output columns that you see here are the columns gosh, I need to be able to show you here so the output columns are the columns that come out and are exposed inside the data flow task Right, so think of this flat file source as, let me just change this, think of this as a, a layer of abstraction, if you will. And so it is abstracting the columns from the source connection manager that are coming in here as the external columns, right? and then whatever we need to do to them whether we change data types, whether we change names, is done in this flat file source and then when the output comes they are known as the output columns okay so what's happened is we're out of sync we now have a different set of data types I'll use a different color down here we now have a different set of data types at the source than we have going out and we can visualize this let me come back and just go right click on my flat file source and go to the advanced editor we can visualize this by looking in the different ones so like vendor ID in the source connection manager is 
identified as a DTI-4 because you and I just did that five minutes ago. But it's out of sync because it's still identified as a non-unicode string 50 when it comes out of this particular source, the flat file source. So when it comes out, it's still coming out as a flat file, uh, sorry, as a non-unicode string 50. So we need to synchronize those types. We need to make them the same thing. So I choose DTI4. And I'm now in sync for that particular column. Okay. The add date, we defined it, or rather suggest types defined it as DT date, but it's still defined as string 50, so go up to DB date. Okay. And same thing, is enabled, uh, up here the suggest types made it a bool, down here it's still non-unicode string, so we just simply need to make it a bool. And when we do that, we get rid of that validation warning. We're, we're, it is a validation warning, but it is a, a synchronization warning. Okay. So I'm going to execute this, and our data viewer now, oops, we have a problem here. Um, what was our error? We have an error. Um, okay, so this is something that we're going to see. It does not read the is enabled properly. It does not successfully convert the true faults that we had. Uh, the flat file source reads it as a boolean but it is not able to convert it. And, uh, that's a different discussion I don't want to have. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I'm going to remove it from our data flow because that's not really what I wanted to focus on. I should have just left that off altogether. What I wanted to focus on was this particular date. Our data viewer now allows us to see that SSIS's DB, uh, DT date data type is not the same as the source. If we go back and look at the vendors.txt, you remember that had the date and the time, but because we chose DT date as the data type, or rather suggest types chose that, chose that then we lost the time component. Okay. Now let's go back and I'm going back to my source connection manager and I'm going to edit it again and under advanced instead of the suggest types I'm going to the add date and I'm going to change this to DTDB timestamp and if you'll remember this is the one that maps to the SQL server date time and the SQL server small date time so I say okay and again we get our synchronization warning and just, I'll go through it again to make maybe the last one with all the explanations was a bit confusing. So I'll go to the advanced editor. It says, hey, your synchronization on the add date column is out of alignment, out of sync. Do you want to automatically have the output columns metadata matched up with the external metadata? Now this is a, this is the term that confuses me and most people. External columns, it really could say, map up with the metadata of the connection manager. That would probably be a little bit easier for me to understand. But I'm going to say, I, I would probably say yes in the real world, but I'm going to say no so that I can show you over here that we've now changed this to DB timestamp in the connection manager. That's what external columns means. But output columns, it's still set to DB date. So I need to go change it to DB timestamp and I get rid of my synchronization warning. And when that happens, now I'm actually back to seeing the date and the time. And it's not the same as the source. You notice that the three, uh, the point zero 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 to deal with the milliseconds, we didn't have that in the actual source file, but that is the precision and the scale of the DB timestamp. Okay. So suggest types is really cool but it does require a little bit of understanding of what's going on and how you can understand what's going on is by using a fake destination with the data viewer. So I hope this helps you. I hope it saves you a bunch of time. It certainly has me through the years.